this central roadie's bicolor here was living inside of a house. Can't have that happen, so I'm just gonna release it on this stump here. Looks like a pretty good stump, actually, for a scorpion to live, so maybe I will see it here in the future. And hopefully not in the house, though. I don't really mind too much. Tonight I'm in western Panama, and I'm looking for scorpions, and I'm gonna be rounding up a ton of them, and then I'm gonna go release them somewhere else, because near these residential areas, they get into homes, and then people kill them. So it's better to get them out further, even though eventually they'll make their way back. I've taken a lot of this palm wood here, decaying palm wood, and I've put it in this bucket. This is where I will put centroides in against their will. I didn't really know how else I'd carry a ton of them at once. And they are communal, so it shouldn't be an issue carrying them uh, together. All right, we've got our first scorpion there. It's this one right here. And this first scorpion that we have, Tidius ocelot, the speckled thick-tailed scorpion. This one is actually almost fully grown, believe it or not. It's not a species that gets very large. And it does have pretty strong venom. Um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna kill you, but it's definitely not something you want to get stung by. This is kind of unexpected. I never thought I'd see a Centroroides, or any scorpion for that matter, using a big hairy caterpillar. Uh, a lot of these are poisonous. I don't know if this one is. It may not be. It could be like a tiger moth or something. Still kind of bizarre. And then for some reason, right up above, there's a whole gathering of wasps with no nest. Very bizarre. Not sure what's going on here. There is a Centroroides back there. I'm gonna to try to collect that one. It's an adult male. Got our first Centroroides in the bucket. This is a bicolor, as expected. Uh, it's the most common scorpion out here. We've got a scorpion hanging out there in the low brush. And the reason it's there is because there's a log right next to it. Usually these don't hang out on the ground unless there's debris. There's our second Centroroides in there. Another Centroroides bicolor, like that one. Got a Belita glossa lignicolor walking around here. And it's probably on the move, looking for small insects. These guys like small insects that are more on the soft side in terms of exoskeletons, like little caterpillars. But oftentimes these guys will sit kind of still in place. I think this one's moving because I disturbed it. Um, they'll sit in place and wait for things to kind of pass by. That's not to say that they're necessarily only passive hunters. Um, they are active hunters as well but they do spend quite a bit of time just resting in one place. And the common name of this guy is the uh, Cameron Mushroom Tongue or the Wood-Colored Mushroom Tongue Salamander. Got another Tidius here, another Tidius Ocelot. And this one's even smaller than the last one, as you could probably tell by the quality of the video right now. Here's our next Centroides, another adult. There's the Centroides that I just took down there. As you can tell, it's another bicolor. Yeah, we're at three adults so far. We've got another scorpion here on the side of this trunk here. Um, this one may be a little tough to get out. Got our uh, fourth scorpion here. Obviously another Centroides bicolor. This one's a male. So I think we're gonna get quite a few tonight. Here's our next scorpion. This is a Tidius species, uh, a large one. I'm going to take my tongs and flick it out of there. Here is our Tidius. And quick thing I wanna point out there is on the stinger, uh, there's a little sub tubercle. Even though it's connected to the vesicle, no venom can come out of that second little bump there. But it's theorized that the reason that they have that is so that they don't accidentally kill each other um, when they're mating. And the reason I know that this is Tidius and not Centroides is even though Tidius already has quite a thin tail and some thin hands, even though they're called thick-tailed scorpions, uh, Centroides hands and tail are still a little thinner than those of scorpions in the genus Tidius. And on the same tree where we just found that Tidius, there's another one. Same species too. And the reason for this is probably because these Tidius and the Centroides may not get along. I've noticed that the bicolor do get along with uh, Tidius ocelot. And that's fine because they take up two different niches actually. But this one is a competitor. So it may be pretty tough to find a tree with both species in it. This tree here is pretty cool. We have one scorpion running up there. And we have, let's see, scorpion right here. Little one, big scorpion in there, and I'm sure there's more. Yeah, we have a little scorpion in there, a big one in there, a smaller one right there. There's a big one hiding in there. There's a whip spider right there. And then on the other side, we have one scorpion here and another smaller one right there on the side. Uh, we have one on the side of the trunk right over here. There's one little one 
down there. There's one hiding in there, and there's another one in there. That must have been over 10 scorpions, and I'm sure there's maybe a dozen more living higher up. All right, we've got our next scorpion here. Um, I actually have five in the bucket right now. So there's the scorpion we just collected, that one that's down at the bottom, and that is number six. I feel kind of bad for them. They're getting kind of muddy, but uh, I didn't really have time to clean out this bucket. Here's our next Centroides bicolor here. This is not a live tree. This is an old stump. Got a Centroides bicolor hanging out down here. Got another little scorpion here. This one is another Tidius ocelot. Here is a juvenile Tidius ocelot. Probably the smallest scorpion we'll see all night. Very tiny. Uh, that being said, I want to show you a baby Centroides bicolor. So hopefully we'll find one. Tidius ocelot uh, looks the same as a juvenile and adult, but bicolor does not. I wanted to show you that scorpion in there. You can just barely see its hands. But since that's not really going to happen, here. Harvestman, also fluoresce under UV light. This is a Venonis. There you have it. Here's our next Centroides. For anyone who thinks I'm hurting them, trust me, I'm not. Got a Centroides here, pretty high up in a tree, I must say. Oh, one of them tried to get out. Get back in there. See, they're all climbing up the side, but it's fairly easy to knock them down because the side is pretty slippery from all that mud that I didn't really clean up. Here's another Tidius ocelot. If you want to see it under UV light, there you have it. This one also has a subaculear tubercle. I think all or most Tidius have that, and then there's quite a few centroids that do too. Got a couple of centroids up here. That one is disappearing into a crack in the tree. That one I may be able to collect, I'm not sure. Something I wanted to show you here. Down here on the forest floor, we have random scorpion parts. Like, there's a hand right there. Uh, I've come to the conclusion that these are actual scorpion parts from one that's been killed, and not a molt. So, either it died of natural causes, or something got a hold of it. And here's what a halfway grown Centroides bicolor looks like back here. Pretty much looks like the adult, but the juveniles don't, so I'm still looking for one of those. Nah, you're not getting away from me. It has a prey item in its mouth that it can't even eat. Here's our next bicolor. And if I didn't already mention it, these are medically significant. And there's uh, an antivenom that's produced for them in Mexico. But I don't know if they have it available here. And it's kind of an issue because they do get into houses quite often. Got a tidiest down here. Kind of a weird place for one to be. But this actually has an explanation, and that is this area, if you can tell, has been cleared. So the habitat that this one used to live in is now gone. But it stayed in the same area, so now it's just kind of on the floor with all this cut down plant matter. This Centroides by color was moving, and it was acting really weirdly. I want you guys to see it. You see, it's moving very bizarrely, and that's because it's in one of these palm trees with a ton of spines, and they can't really effectively move through it, so... Really quite a poor place to uh, choose as a home for a scorpion. Not sure why this one's here. In fact, actually, I think its tail is stuck. Yeah, it is. It can't move. All right, here we have finally a tree which shares Tidius, like this one, um, with spider, giant cockroach up there, Centroides bicolor. So, looks like they're mixing in the same trees. And then there was a Tidius somewhere else. Oh yeah, found it. Up on the branch there. I don't know who these eggs are from, but under UV light, 
they glow really brightly. Actually, in all my time uh, using a UV flashlight to look for scorpions, I've never seen something like this. There's all sorts of stuff that glows under UV light, um, like lichens and different mosses and small plants, but I've never seen eggs do this. Ever see two scorpions mating? Well, they're not actually mating, but this is the, uh, the dance, so to speak, that they do before mating. I think actually that was the one that was stuck in the uh, palm tree. As you may be able to hear, we're near uh, the river, so I'm getting ready to release these. Those two, it looks like they're still mating. Um, and as you can see, there's absolutely no aggression from one scorpion to another, because as I said, they are communal. Looks like we collected about 15 or so scorpions. I'm sure there's a couple hiding in the wood. These will be safer in the area I'm about to release them. And I'll try to disperse them just a little bit, but I think they'll do it mostly themselves. And here's the mating pair under UV. It looks like a third scorpion is trying to join in, but the male isn't really having it. All right, I'm gonna turn this thing on its side. And let everyone out. Looks like I accidentally got one of them stuck too. My bad, sorry about that. I think I'm just gonna leave this bucket here overnight and then uh, collect it in the morning. Also, I said I wanted to find a juvenile of the species. Since I wasn't able to, here's a clip of a mother and her babies. As you can tell, her babies are more orange in color and they have that median dorsal stripe that the adults don't. So they definitely change as opposed to the other two tidiest. That will be all for this video of looking for and relocating scorpions. So thank you for watching.